up, guys? Hope you're all having an amazing Sunday. Welcome or welcome back to another episode of Crazy List. And on today's Crazy List of events, we're going to be talking about Iran and its protests that have been actually blowing up around the world. <laughs> So, a little backstory for those of you who are new or don't know what's going on. Iran's protests actually started on 16th of September 2022 due to the death of Masa Amini while she was in the custody of the morality police. She was a Kurdish girl from the northeast side of Iran, and she actually came to Tehran to visit family members. While she was out with her cousin and her older brother, she was caught by the morality police telling her that her hijab was not put on correctly. Even though she begged for them to let her go and that she had no one in Tehran, they didn't listen to her and dragged her and took her into custody. After a few days in the custody of the morality police, she was she collapsed and was transferred to the hospital and after pronounced dead. This actually spiked protests all over Iran and everyone started going into the streets and protesting about the fact that women don't have rights. These protests have been going on for a very long time now and so many other young children and teenagers have been killed by the morality police. And as a fellow Iranian, I thought that this would be something that I should address to the world. It might not be much, but it can certainly help in any way that it can. Well, obviously, I am not currently in Iran, so I don't have the full insight of what's going on. But a friend of mine was actually kind enough to help me for the guest part of this podcast, and she will be joining us soon to talk about what's actually going on in Iran and give us more details. Without further ado, let's go. Hello, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you today? Good, thank you for joining us. Good, thank you. Uh, I've been hearing a lot about what's been going on in Iran and how it all started with the death of Masa Amini. Could you please tell me more about that? Yeah, of course. Um, well, it did start with the death of Masa Amini, but it's not just because of it. It's like a lot of pent up rage that uh, people have been having for a long time and they've been wanting to let it out and they just haven't been able to until now that they have an excuse. I see. And I have also heard that they have escalated so much that it has reached sports and the World Cup that it has led to people actually celebrating the loss of their team, which I'm pretty sure you're supposed to celebrate it if they win, not when they lose. Well, you see, micro-celebrities like sportsmen have a big impact in media, and when they say something is good or something is bad, a lot of people just take their side blindly. That's why it's so important for them to not give out propaganda supporting the government. So when they lost because of the things they did, people were just happy, I what suppose. What were the things that they did? What did they do that made people so mad? Well, 
Well, see, I think their families were threatened that they did, did this thing. Like, they sang the national anthem and they were joyful when they would score a goal when they were supposed to act like they did in their last game. And, like, according to people, they were supposed to act like they did in their last game and not be joyful for their wins and stand with the people in silence when the anthem played instead of singing along. And is it true that people say now the team is the government's team because they went to visit the government before they left? Is that true? Is that true? Well, I wouldn't know that, but I guess it wouldn't be a hundred percent. Like just because they saw uh, officials before the game doesn't mean that like they're with them. It could mean that the officials were actually threatening them or their families because they have done that with other athletes. I see. Well, what is your own opinion on this whole situation? Do you think that it's good and that do people actually get somewhere by doing this? Well, uh, I don't know how far this is going to reach. I don't think it's going to be like as far as they want it to be, but obviously it will not uh, be without any consequences for the government. For example, the protests and how they are going on strike, it has left the government uh, in such a bad situation because instead of profiting, they're losing money. And... Wow, I forgot English for a moment. It's okay, you're on the show. We got you. Uh, if this process itself doesn't get somewhere, the next one definitely will. And the next one will just be worse until they get where they want it to be. And do you think that this government has hope to be saved, or do you think people want it to be cut off from the roots completely? Well, uh, people want it to be completely gone, and I believe the government is beyond saving at this point. But if the government is cut up from the roots, the pe- people will go through a lot of pain. Because each revolution, you can ask anyone who's been through one, has its downsides and is painful in some way economic. There could be like a fight between two some people saying, oh, we need a monarchy, we need to be communist. Or some people could be like, no, we need to be a presidency, we need to be like socialists or whatever like that. So even if this government does end up leaving, who will the next government be? Or will there be a king well, and not a government anymore? Well, see. That's the problem in this situation. There's no clear person that I know of that can take this position. I have heard that the um, former king's son has been stepping up to lead the people, but that is not necessarily a good option because people who are protesting don't know enough about him and what he stands for. Like, ask a random person on the street, what does this guy stand for? And they can't answer you. So you think that he's been outside of politics for a long time? Not that he's been outside of politics. It's just that the people need, the people are like rushing into things. And this immediate replacement could lead to a lot of war and a lot between the other people, you know? Yeah, it could cause bigger problems. I see, so it could cause bigger problems. Yeah, nothing's bigger problem than this government killing children, but... That's true. Do you think that there could be a better approach to this problem than just people protesting in the streets? Well, no, I think this is the best approach that they can have. Like, the best approach right now, the most damage that can be dealt to these guys is by people just going on strike, not opening shops. And this hurts the people themselves, too, because, you know, people need food, people need the money that they make daily. But 
if they go and strike to give the most damage, they're going to get some damage themselves. I see. It's the government who needs to step down. It's the government who needs to step down and uh, give them some freedom. Like, if the government right now just ignores one third of the people want, like, ignores everything and fixes one of their problems, these protests would die down a lot. Like, if he just uh, didn't lift the, the ban on women's normal hair. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. And do you think that it's important for outsiders to help? And if so, oh. how can they help? Oh, it is definitely very important for outsiders to help because without their help, there would be no revolution. The last time that there was a revolution, it was because of the outsiders' help. This should benefit other countries so that they would step up. For example, a revolution right now would not uh, benefit China, it would not benefit Russia, so they would be against it. And we need help from other countries out of human sympathy so that we can get somewhere. Without sanctions, without help from them, we can't get anywhere. Yeah. We can't hurt them, they're unhelpable. Yeah. What, they uh, what is something that they can do to help? Well, they could do a lot of things. They could close their bank accounts, like the bank accounts of all these people at the top, all these rich people at the top who have millions, billions of dollars in their accounts. They could just close that so that they couldn't have access to their resources. And cut, cutting them off would be a big step. And that wraps up today's episode. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me today. All right.